Hello and welcome my friend, or my spill my tea there. Today I want to share with you the latest science and data around the COVID vaccine and whether it affects your periods. I also want to address some really important questions like does it affect your fertility? So we'll do all of this over this lovely cup of tea. Let's get started. So a little bit of context, the MHRA is like a regulator and after you've had the vaccine, they have a system called the yellow card system where if you have any symptoms, a tinkle on your foot or constipation or anything, you can report it to them. And their job is basically to look at it and see if there are any high numbers of unusual symptoms that could be linked to the vaccine. About 30,000 women reported that they had period changes after the vaccine and to me, that sounded like quite a lot. And when it comes to the period cycle, it's a very finely balanced cycle. You've got hormones from the brain that are released that go and communicate with the ovaries. The ovaries are releasing estrogen and progesterone, therefore at the end coming back and communicating with the brain. It's all what we call an equilibrium and a finely balanced orchestra. So there are things that can slightly alter or change that fine balance, which can affect the period therefore. At the moment, from the data the MHRA have had a look at, they've not been able to conclusively show that the vaccines have caused these period changes. Remember, tens of millions of people have had the vaccines. 30,000 people sounds a lot, both to me initially, but also you have to think about common conditions. People would get them. Tens of thousands of people will get these common conditions like arthritis, back pain, and I guess period changes in this occasion. The tough part's trying to work out whether something is conclusively caused by the vaccine. And at the moment, it's not conclusive. There is some scientific theory that suggests it could be linked and we'll dive into those. But whether these changes are actually permanent or temporary, and for that, I'm gonna use the words of Dr. Joe Mountfield, who's the vice president of the Royal College of Ops and Gynae, basically the people in charge of maternal health in the UK. Essentially what they've said is that um, women's periods usually revert back to normal within one or two cycles, but also the important thing is that there's no evidence of fertility changes. Lastly, the important part is that pregnant women are still far more at risk of complications of COVID, especially if they're not vaccinated. In terms of a scientifically plausible explanation for period changes after a vaccine, we look at what Dr. Jackie Maben said. She hypothesized that at a time of stress, the woman's reproductive cycle can be downregulated, and we know that that happens. The COVID vaccine has initiated an immune response, and whilst that immune response is going on in your body, we know that that finely balanced hormonal system between your brain, your ovaries, and back to your brain can be slightly disturbed temporarily. And once your immune response has settled, that hormonal system goes back to normal, therefore there is no changes to your fertility and no ongoing changes to your periods. And it does kind of make sense, your body downregulates the reproductive system when it is under a time of stress, and that means both physical and psychological. So for some women, we do see that when they're stressed, anxious, or depressed, that the periods can be altered, but also we see it in terms of the physical side. So women who are training to do marathons or athletes, or sometimes if they are very underweight, all of these kind of stresses on the body can also stop them from having periods or alter their periods. The key thing here is it's temporary. As your body's immune response settles, the periods go back to normal. But I think it's so important to do more research on this because People need to know if there's a direct link and that the only way we can know that is with more research and more data. Imagine if you went into your vaccine for the first time and you didn't know it caused a fever or an ache in your arm and you got home and your arm was absolutely killing and you had a fever that was through the roof. It'll be like super frightening and that may be something that people are going through with period changes. Also a time like this gives an opportunity for conspiracy theorists and misinformation pushers to start putting in their own agendas and putting seeds of doubt in people's mind, which is really, really sad to see because it's just people who are unsure and confused. So it is important we put more research into this and it is important we get more answers so we can fully inform people. That brings us on to topic number two. And when it comes to fertility, it's an area that anti-vaxxers absolutely love because it's quite an emotive topic. A lot of people can be scared by it and it's easy for them to try and manipulate people basically. But the first one is this insight in one spike protein theory. Basically, they suggest that the COVID vaccine creates a spike protein that is similar to Syncytum 1, which is a key placenta protein, and they think that the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines are the ones that do this. Your primed immune system will then go and attack the placenta. However, they haven't proven any data that shows this, 
it's just a theory and the second part is that they've based it on they, them looking at a very specific and small part of the genetic code of the two proteins. Spoiler alert, when you look at a very small part of a protein genetic code, it's going to be similar all over the body because it's a protein. So that's the first part. Secondly, we share genetic code that is like 98% similar to chimpanzees. We look different we can do different things to chimpanzees. The phenotype, i.e. the expression of that extra 2% has made a huge difference between humans and chimpanzees, and it's the same for things in our body as well. The specific small differences can account for massive functional differences. And that's the thing, your immune system is very specific. It's not gonna just attack random proteins because they share small genetic code that is similar. So this theory already doesn't really make any biological sense. But let's go down their rabbit hole theory. Because they're saying the spike protein's doing this, why wouldn't COVID cause the same reaction? Vaccine spike proteins are essentially trying to make a spike protein that mimics COVID. So in terms of their theory, COVID should cause the same exact immune reaction and the placenta would be attacked and we should see a huge surge of miscarriages except we haven't, and there's no data to suggest that. Yes, COVID does cause inflammation, it causes lots of long-term problems, but we haven't seen this massive rise in miscarriages. Now onto the latest research. Dr. Randy Morris, a US fertility doctor, had a look at his IVF patients, and he had three categories, vaccinated, unvaccinated, and previous COVID infection, and he wanted to know what the rates of pregnancy were in those. No difference at all. So he looked at embryo implantation rate, and also how likely that embryo was to go to full term and no issues at all in the vaccinated groups, which adds to a massive body of evidence that shows that after vaccination, women are still as fertile as they were before. Another study looked at the same cohort of people going through IVF, first looking at them, what they were like before the vaccination, then later on looking at them after vaccinations. They looked at lots of factors like fertilization rate, embryos, quality of embryos, and a number of other factors. And what they found was that after vaccines, people's um, fertility rates didn't actually go down, it stayed about the same as it was beforehand. There are actually a few more studies that I could have included, but to be honest, it showed exactly the same results, and I've included them in the description for you to have a look. What we now need are far larger studies that look at the same thing and hopefully can show the same results. One of the other theories I see circulating around social media is that the vaccine will accumulate in your ovaries and therefore it will make you infertile. This is based on a study, a Japanese study, that they keep quoting, but actually I don't think they fully read the study itself. Firstly, it's not done on humans. The study was done on rats. They were trying to work out what happens to the envelope that delivers the vaccine. So they didn't have any of the vaccine itself in the study, just the envelope lipid nanoparticles of the envelope and essentially working out where in the body all that kind of fat goes. Uh, they found out that 25% of it after 48 hours stays at the site, 16% went to the liver and 0.1% after 48 hours was in the ovary. And they decided to pick on that one as ovary has absorption of you know the vaccine. So again, misreading of the study can cause fear. The social media post obviously doesn't tell you the whole picture of it, but hopefully that informs you a bit more. And the other thing is when you hear lipid nanoparticles, people get a bit scared. They think microchips, what is this nano? Is that nanobots? Not really. Nano is a measure of size, so very, very small. Lipid is basically fat and this envelope just stops from the vaccine from spreading all over the place, keeps it nice in shape and delivered to the cell where it can do its business. The bottom line is everyone can make their own choice on this matter. I've tried to give you as much of the latest information, but the truth is with everything in life, there is a risk. There's a risk when you go and cross the road. There's a risk when you go on holiday and you fly on that airplane. But what we as scientists, as doctors have tried to do is the same thing as the scientists that got the airplane up in the air and the pilot that's driving the plane. We try and give you the latest data, the latest science. And if you have any questions, then please leave them below. I try and answer them. And please be careful. Lots of anti-vaxxer links down there, which can take you down rabbit holes. If you've enjoyed this, you may also enjoy this video. It's on pregnancy and whether it's safe to have the vaccine, especially when you're breastfeeding. I've been Dr. Khaled. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.